right, guys, here you go. Uh, another Tucker Carlson UFO segment. Um, I know you guys, a lot of you guys are like me, UFO nerds, and you like this kind of stuff. So let me go ahead and just get right to it. This was aired on the 10th of December of 2021 from Tucker Carlson tonight. Here's Tucker Carlson with Lou Elizana. Check this out. So right before Thanksgiving, the Pentagon quietly announced a program called the Airborne Object Identification and Management Synchronization Group. Boy, they're big into long titles over there. Experts say it's part of the Defense Department's effort to monopolize research into UFOs and shut down any independent investigation of the subject. But there's some good news. The defense bill making its way through the Congress includes language that will force the Pentagon to make its findings on UFOs public. So the question here is, why is the government after promising not to do this repeatedly, still hiding information on something that is very much in the public interest, which is what are these things, these UFOs? We know they're real, we don't know what they are, we probably have a right to know that, it's our government after all, but they're still hiding it from us. Why? Lou Elizondo is one of the world's experts, maybe the world's expert on this. He used to study UFOs for the Pentagon, he joins us tonight. Lou, thanks so much for coming on. So let's just go Thank right to motive. Me. We know these are real, we know the Pentagon takes them seriously, if not in public. Why in the world would they still be hiding this information from us? Yeah, I mean, it is kind of peculiar, isn't it, Tucker, that, you know, really the day before Thanksgiving, the Pentagon decides to announce the creation of this office when they've had, you know, four years to do it uh, beforehand. Um, I do think it is a good idea to have a, a centralized office. Yes. I'm not so sure that it's good to put it where they want to put it. At the end of the day, the organization they want to put it under is my old office. It's the Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence, which is an oversight capability, not an operational capability. And plus, there are still some of the old elements in that organization that really didn't do us much favors when I was running the program four years ago. Right. Well, that's obvious. In fact, if it weren't for you effectively blowing the whistle, we wouldn't be having this conversation in the first place. So speculate in your informed way about their motive. Like, what do they know that they don't want us to know, do you think? Well, I, I, if I could be completely forthcoming, I think they don't know a lot. And that in itself is 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 probably what they don't want to necessarily have a conversation about. Right. Um, even in, recently, when you when you listen to the Pentagon spokesperson, uh, no offense, but there's no there's no indication that they're going to be open and forthcoming with the American people. When you look at the legislation that has been presented in this NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act, this is historic. I mean, this basically tells the U.S. government, both the Director of National Intelligence and the Secretary of Defense, you will report to Congress both at the classified and the unclassified versions. And oh, by the way, you're going to create a, a field team. You're going to create a, a capability to go out and not just sit back and relax and wait for information to come to you. But you now have to be proactive. You have to go out and actually collect that information as it's happening. And then you have to report it to us. And last but not least, if there's information that you can't report because it's too classified, you have to report that fact to Congress, too. So this is this is really a fantastic I think, I mean, it's huge. It's, it's, it's very comprehensive. It's pages and pages. And can, I got to tell you, I'm really, really proud of Congress for it. Really quick, I just want to ask you a bottom line question. Do you know anybody who's deeply knowledgeable on this subject, who studies at the Pentagon, for example, who believes that these objects are from Russia and China, who believes they're terrestrial, they're foreign military aircraft? There, there's a couple individuals, I'm not going to call them out, uh, that for whatever reason still remain extremely apprehensive about this topic. But at the end of the day, you know what? I say, fine, let, let the data speak for itself. Let's Now that we've got a mechanism to actually collect and analyze this information, let the data speak for itself, and then, and then right. they'll come to the natural conclusion of what this is. Yeah, it's pretty clearly not from Russia or China, I would say. Just my view. Pretty clear. Lou Elizondo, appreciate your coming on. Thank you. Thanks for having me.